Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jackson. This is my uh, PhD student, Gabriel Abdullahi. And so a lot of what we do is trying to integrate uh, new technologies into agriculture, especially beef production. So one of the things we've been thinking about, you know, we originally proposed this project is, you know, it gets to be this time of year, and actually a little bit later on in the year, uh, you get home about five o'clock or six o'clock, and it's already getting dark. You know, it's really hard to go out there and get, a, get an eye on all the animals. So that's where we came up with the idea, potentially trying to use drones to get out there either before that or a little bit earlier and cover a lot more ground. Because as a crow flies, I gotta cross all these fences, gates, whatever it may be, to actually get out there and work with these animals or see, you know, I just wanna see what's going on. If there's a cow out by herself or all the cows are together, I, want, I just wanna to try to know what's going on. And so that's where we're looking at this from a standpoint of trying to use drones on the farm. And so some of that, you know, we figured out we're going to try to use, use these as a tool. They can't be a toy, but we want to use them as a tool. And so, you know, we had to figure out how do cattle actually respond when we fly around them with drones? You know, are they going to be frightened, scared? Um, what is their physiological behavioral response? And so that's where we had to figure out, you know, how do you measure that? And so we went through a couple different iterations of, you know, what's affordable, what's accurate, you know, from a standpoint of behavioral, we're looking at GPS uh, devices. So this is a GPS puck um, that are used land air sea. We've used and connect that to additional battery pack. But um, you know we're trying to get that as behavioral, see how fast the cows move, if they move when we fly the drone around them. And then a physiological uh, standpoint. And so that was trying to measure, in that case, heart rate. And we have to use the same technology that we'd have for people, that they have for horses. And it's just a heart rate belt is what we're utilizing. And so just really looking at and trying to see, you know, what and how the animals will respond. And so Gabriel's going to tell about some of the research he's done and worked on uh, to, to this point about what we figured out for flying one drone, multiple drones, different altitudes, and what have you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Jackson. Exactly what he said. I am a grad student in the Department of Biosystems and Ag Engineering. And my research is focused on understanding the behavioral and physiological response of beef cattle to the drones that we are trying to introduce into the cattle's environment. Uh, so many times we have great ideas, but it's very important that we understand how the ideas affect the animals or the people that are being introduced to it. And so it was very important that we understood it before we jumped into introducing this great idea to the animals, then they freak out. And instead of really seeing their well-being, then we are scaring them out. So as part of my research, uh, we first looked at how different flight patterns affect uh, beef cattle behavior and physiology. When I say flight pattern, we're looking at uh, mapping patterns where if you, if you, if you were conducting uh, a flight path or if you're mapping out your pasture and there were heifers in it, how would they react? And we're also looking at an observation flight where the drone can be deployed and a, a circular flight is run so that you observe the animals and their behavior and other things that they were doing on the pasture. And we realized that that didn't really affect them. What we did in that study was that we maintained the altitude. so. Uh, everything was constant, altitude was constant, or, or the only thing that changed was just the flight pattern. And whereas at, at that altitude of 30 feet above ground, uh, the cows were normal and they were chill and it didn't really freak them out. Then we said, okay, uh, what happens next? Uh, let's introduce two drones. Uh, because the idea that we have uh, in the future is to be able to deploy these drones in an autonomous fashion where the drones can, you can set a time where they, they get deployed, uh, autonomously go out there uh, with, the, with a mothership or a controlled drone and two worker drones who, who, who can be controlled by the main or the mothership to uh, kind of observe or undertake some roles that you want to see in the animals. So uh, the idea is if we have multiple drones, how would the cows react? And we realized that when you approach, uh, when you use two drones to approach cows, initially their heart rates spike. They just get scared and they become worried about what is being introduced into their environment. Um, but with time, 
the heart rate it settles down so we didn't find significant differences between the pre-flight and the uav flight heart rate that's the heart rate of the cow before we are before the drone was introduced and the heart rate of the cow when the drone was introduced and this study was conducted over four weeks three days each week and we saw that the cows became acclimatized in their physiological response however in their behavioral response, we didn't see any strong acclimatization. That means that the cows they were more likely to express fleeing behavior or avoidance behavior. So uh, if you flew two drones continuously, they will still respond. They will still change their behavior. They want to walk away or stay away from you. However, if the drones were being conducted at the same altitude above them in an observation format, they became acclimatized to it in physiology and behavior. So uh, in their behavior, we didn't see them running or avoid us because we kept the altitude constant and the drones were right above them compared to uh, the approach style where the drones were kind of getting in their space and reducing or increasing their flight, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, flight the flight zone, zone increasing. Flight, maybe flight zone. So yeah. Have a flight zone for when people are around. Same thing for when drones are around. Exactly. And so, like you were saying, 88% of the time, so when we first flew that first day, 80% of that animals uh, took off in some way, shape, or form when we were flying the S circular. circular pattern. And then by the time we got to week four, that had dropped to, I think, it's, 33%. 33%. So we saw that reduction over that time period, that them getting acclimated to just the drones being out there. So over a four week period, we're able to see that acclimation to some degree. If we're approaching from the approach style, where we're coming and just coming right at the, at the calf with two drones, yeah. they, uh, first week was very similar to the last week. They, they were not, they were apprehensive the first week and definitely apprehensive in week four still. Yeah. So it was uh, how, you, how you fly this is important as well as like, you know, where, where you're flying. Uh, so if you're approaching the animal from the front or side, they were definitely freaking out or definitely uh, more apprehensive from a physiological and behavioral standpoint. Yeah. Uh, and, and one thing we also did was uh, look at uh, the difference in size, uh, UAV size. I mean, uh, you can look at the catalog of drones that we have here. This is a very small drone, uh, less than 0 0.55 pounds. Yep. Um, as you go up, the drone sizes increase. So uh, depending on the amount of money that you have as a producer, you might want to have a drone with all the whistles and uh, the bells and whistles, a fancy drone. Or you just want something that you can fly with your kids and they can play around and get used to how to fly a drone. So uh, we looked at the size of a drone, effect of UAV size on cattle behavior as well. Um, in that study, we still maintain the altitude and we didn't find strong reactions. Even though the data is still under review, uh, anecdotally in some of the videos that we saw, the cows didn't run helter-skelter. And another study that we did, uh, we looked at how the temperament of the cows is inf are influenced by the presence of the UAV. So uh, we looked at, we, we intentionally picked cows with very high temperament and when you have cows with high temperament, you know that handling them is difficult. You are very careful about that. And cows that are very low temperament, they are, they are more docile and you can easily handle them. How would they react when they are introduced to drones? Does that affect them? And from the initial videos that we saw, it actually doesn't, their behavior, the, the temperament of the cows doesn't influence their response to the drones. So it's very interesting some of the things that we found that uh, cows with high temperament, even though you think that they'll run away from you, when the drones came around, it was very different. So uh, we, were, we, were, we were very surprised looking at the data. Yeah. Because it was just, we thought that the ones who were more, more excitable, we thought they were going to take off running the same, similar, similar to what they were with us. Yeah. And that was not the case. We were very surprised. Yeah. And then what about a 15? Uh, feet above ground level. Oh yeah, uh, we also, in which, which one is that? Uh, the last one we did, I think. Uh, the approach style? Um, just the circular. Oh yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was actually at 15 feet and uh, the, 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 the UAV size was at 15 feet. Yes. Yeah, and 
still there was no direct impact on them regarding the change in behavior and physiology. And we also did another study where uh, we approached the cows from the front and from behind. Uh, because that's something that you wonder what happens when we are approaching the cows from the front and from behind. And we realize that actually when you approach the cows from, from a point of view where they can perceive the drone, in this study we're just using one drone, they were less likely to run, but their heart rate was more likely to increase because even though they were not running, they were scared that that thing, the drone was approaching them. However, cows who were approached from behind did not, uh, they were more likely to run, but their heart rate was less likely to spike. And it's, I think that it just has to do with uh, the ability to perceive the danger that is approaching and, 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 and what not. So, so and that's what I've been working on. Over to you, sir. And then uh, we're going to do a quick watch yourself. Got a drone there. So, one of the things we did here with this one here is like uh, we thought about using drones for actually monitoring our fence lines, monitoring waters, feed bunks, whatever it may be. So for that, we actually uh, set up a flight path. So there's a couple different apps for you. So if it's Apple, you can use the DJI Go 4, or this is a Ground Station Pro as well. And then uh, for its Android products, I think it's uh, Drone Harmony or some other apps. You can just look on there. There's a multitude of apps that we can utilize. So this kind of shows you the drone going along this, uh, this fence line here. The, the blue arrow there is the drone. Green line is it going along it's the path it's following. And so we can actually view and record the video if we needed to. And so we can see, you know, it's looking at those feed troughs down there, the solar panels. So we can use it to potentially inspect our fence lines, inspect our pastures, you know, just look for the animals in general. So this is set up, you know, I'm not touching any of the controls right now. I told it to take off and fly this flight path along my fence lines to, you know, evaluate it. And so I can record the video. And so our next, next goal is just to automate the process of actually analyzing the video to make sure is it, is there a major, you know, it should, Disconnected with aircraft. should largely, should largely stay the same. Make sure I can keep a good connection. Should largely stay the same. But, uh, you know, if there's a big um, tree or something that falls down, we'll make sure that we're able to see that. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to figure out our cost. So I try to figure out as much as detailed as possible the cost of a drone. And so part of that is, uh, you know, think about how much do you think it takes to char recharge each one of these batteries here? With oh, yeah, I see. So we have these batteries here. How much do you think it takes to charge it? This gives you about... 24 minutes, uh, 30 minutes of flight. Take ship. Take a take a wild guess. With how, how, how much do you think? It, how much money do you think it takes to charge it? You know, we pay by electricity by the kilowatt hour. How much do you think it takes? Less than a less than a penny. Less than a penny. So this, I mean, it's it's a good guess, but it's you know because it, it's hard to you know really estimate because I thought it would be more much more myself, but you know we look at it. And it's 100 watts and. Just uh, for an hour to charge and 10 cent per kilowatt hour, so it's, it's a penny. And so actually the, the main, main cost associated with just the purchase of purchasing the aircraft, and so we spread that cost out over the, um, the number of flights that we conduct. So it's typically, I tell producers, about a uh, dollar per acre, you know, when you're flying over a, a certain, uh, maybe about 50 acres per flight, it's about a dollar per acre. And so the more you fly, the less that cost will actually be. So the more you fly, you know, the cost per flight associated with that drone is going to be spread out over more and more flights. So the lower and lower that cost goes, and then it just becomes uh, equivalent to how much you value your time. So if you're $15 an hour, it'll approach $15 per hour for that drone for you to be out there flying, or $15 per flight. And so it's, it's really, you know, what you can think to use it for and how you use it. So, you know, this case, you know, we'd be flying along uh, that, the tree line there. I might set up a flight path, and it can go faster or slower depending on what you need. There are parts where you can you can adjust the speed for each aspect. Disconnected with aircraft. So if I want to keep, um, Disconnected with aircraft. If I want to like look at a certain feature, like a hay ring or something something like that in the wintertime, hay rings, waterers, have that fly over that, I can set up waypoints, so GPS waypoints, latitude, longitude, and elevation can be set. And then I can fly those exact points. Uh, and look and see, make sure everything's still okay. If it's something I need to change, I can go out there and rectify it. Mm -hmm. So it's a quick, you know, as the crow flies, 
uncover a lot of ground with these. And, and so we can go, you know, almost a mile away, or some can go more than a mile away. We're supposed to maintain, right now, we're supposed to maintain visual line of sight. But, um, you know, we have to make sure at this point, you know, maintain a visual line of sight. So we apply within, with stand on the high point on the farm and just let it fly, is what I'd suggest. Or try to find that high point and let it fly. And so a lot of that was largely autonomous. We can control it, you know. If I wanted to fly over the cows, we could. And so a lot of the flights we did, like he said, were circular flight patterns or maybe grid flight patterns, or we're looking at, uh, so I can stop that. And How high are you right now? So this here, so most of what it was flying, it was at uh, 30 feet. Disconnected with aircraft. Mission resumed. Then it was paused. Yeah, I had it. I had those were waypoints. Those are my waypoints I'd programmed in there. And so, you know, that's at 138 feet right now. We'll drop it down because there we go. That's about 60 feet there. And so that right there, you know, that's where we were flying for most of our trials. So we we're flying about 30 feet above ground level. So the cows underneath that we're flying at 30 feet. For the most part, you know, 30 feet and above, no care is given. They, you know, there will be some concerns, you know, if you, depending on how you approach them. But if we're flying above them, they generally didn't seem to care. Uh, that we did this with beef heifers, so uh, weanling heifers, and also uh, bred heifers. And we didn't do any with any cow calves because there are a fair number of buses out here. So I don't want I want them to stay vigilant to the black vultures. You know, I don't want them to get too acclimated in my in my mind. So we didn't fly during cabin. But we, you know, we're flying, looking at fence lines, you know, primarily the other part, and also looking at the cattle. So we're trying to figure out a good way to effectively utilize these, you know, on the farm. Uh, so this was just, uh, so there's two ways to do that. You can either do it uh, on the map, so you can bring up, um, let me see if I can bring it up. I, you can either set up on the map, and I actually like to, uh, what I like to do is actually fly it and record my flight. So what I can do is go through and I can set up one real quick here. Give me a second. Um, so in this one, this is Ground Station Pro. What I would do is just pretty much hit the add a mission, and I set up a waypoint route flight, and I record all my aircraft flights. So I actually set up to record the aircraft uh, flight. And so with that, um, I have it set up where I'll fly along a certain line, whatever is of interest to me. Let me see here. So if I'm flying along this fence line, let me get back over here. I'll actually, you know, and it's pretty fairly easy because they have a button on here to add my waypoints. I'll click the set button. That adds one waypoint, then I go on through. And as I fly down my fence line, you know, certain heights, I like to stay at least 20, 30 feet above ground level and 20, 30 feet away from tree lines because your GPS accuracy will drift. It can drift by up to 20 to 30 feet. So. I try to stay at least that far from obstacles. So if there's a lot of trees, you know, you might have to fly up and over. That's fine. Just put it before, during, and after you fly over those trees. You don't want to have it going, trying to go straight through. Because if you know, I set a waypoint here and then I set a waypoint, my next waypoint, if I fly over the trees and set my next waypoint here, it's going to think that it can fly through them. So whenever there's an obstacle or, or electric line, I'll fly up, I'll record my point, fly up, record another point, fly across, record a point, waypoint, then fly back down to the altitude I want it to, and then fly continue flying. If you were doing it manually, would you have to keep the joysticks pointed up to where you would keep up, or would you just let it go after you get it to what you want? And so if I'm flying manually, I would just avoid, you know, whatever obstacle is, tree, I'd avoid it, flying across, then go back down once I reach the other side. Um, so you record that as it flies, it's recording that? So as I'm, like as, I'm fly, as I'm flying uh, to each point, it's not recording, but as I hit the set button, I can hit the set button right here, so I can come over here and show mm -hmm. you. There's a set button. This is Ground Station Pro for Apple products. There's a, a set button here, and so I would click that, and it records that point. So as I'm flying along, I record it, and I can fly as slow or as fast as needed. And then as I get on further, um, you know, I can fly slow, then change it later on. So after I create this flight path, I can actually change it to fly faster in the future. But it's record. It's recording. I can still do the same. I could do the same flight path. So yeah, you can actually save it. Uh, 
So you can save it as like, I want to fly this with my beef bash route, yeah. is what I save this as. Okay. And so I can save different flight routes. So, you know, a lot of times I tell producers, if you're going to fly, maybe have one for your boundary fence. You know, have it be about, if it's a 20, 30 minute flight, you know, maybe go about uh, 10, 11 miles per hour, uh, depending. And then I have a couple of different flight routes for my interior fences so that are of interest or I have a certain flight route for my hay rings and my stuff that's going to be pertinent in the winter time. So I set up different flight routes for what different activities on the farm. Um, yeah, and so that, you know, obviously when we have an ice storm, you know, I can see the water is still there, I guess, but I can see it's frozen over. Um, or maybe see that the cows have gone up and maybe the ball's not broken, broken loose. Um, is weather an issue when you're what, on a drone? Weather can be an issue if it's like it was yesterday, or if, it doesn't matter if you're flying, if it was so foggy. Yesterday morning was so, so foggy. I wanted to do hay so bad yesterday, and it just wouldn't let me because it was so foggy for most of the morning. Um, so weather can be an issue. You're supposed to have three miles of visibility. We have really great visibility today. Yeah. Um, you're not supposed to fly in inclement weather, so rainfall, snow, but there are drones that can. You know, if you make that investment, uh, you can risk it however you see fit. <laughs> but, you know, on the really, really bad days, really windy days, you start to almost put boots on the ground. You know, I, I'd still suggest putting boots on the ground, going and check them. But for days when you're kind of short on time, you know, this is something that could be deployed. You go out there, fly, search your fence lines, you know, look at it, make sure nothing's, nothing's gone wrong. And plus, it also helps you um, in some regard because you've also um, proven that you've judicially checked your fence lines. So if ever was a cow that did get out or something did happen, you can say, well, I've been monitoring, I have the proof that I have been monitoring on a frequent basis. Yeah. So it can also help you if there was some instance where cows did get out because you can show that you've been monitoring and so some degree monitoring, hopefully maintaining that fence line as well. So, you know, they can be, you know, and plus they also be a fun tour if you really want them to be. You know, they can be whatever you want. <laughs> but we're trying to trying to use them as a tool. You know, my, my end goal is as a tool. So a lot of times I see people get it for the son or daughter or grand grandkids and they have it. And I was like, well, go ahead and let them use it, but show, tell them how to use it. You know, maybe advise them, hey, go ahead and check your fence line, go and do this. And so when we start doing activities like that, you know, we do need to have our drone registered with the FAA. FAA. So if it's above, this one's actually skirting the rules a little bit. So it's 249 grams. So it's able to, you don't have to register it with the FAA, but otherwise you have to register them with the FAA. It's $5 and it's good for, for um, three years. And then the other one we have is um, like, if you are doing it, getting paid for commercial purposes, um, you need to go ahead and get your part 107 license. It's a quiz and it's um, 100 or 60 questions. I think it costs $150 and it's good for two years. So it's just your license to fly. So a lot of times we're doing like, you know, for extension and other aspects, we have to have our commercial licenses, part 107 licenses. But if you're on the farm for recreational purposes, you, know, you can fly without, a, you don't necessarily need a license at this point. And the smaller, one, the smaller one will. It actually, so this one, you know, they, it's a ultralight. They just came out with it. It actually does takes 4K video. So it's actually a fairly resilient camera, fairly resilient system. It actually fly for 20 minutes as well. It's not going to be as resistant to the wind and, and other aspects, but it, it can be a more effective purchase because this, you know, this one here is about two grand, has all kinds of collision avoidance systems. This one here is probably by itself four or $500. So it's, it's more, it's more, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not trying to rationalize it for you, but it's more approachable. <laughs> it's, it's a more approachable option, you know, I think. So this, this one you can use like primarily your cell phone with its, this remote control. This one's uh, for your cell phone. The other ones, you know, they're capable of supporting a larger tablet. Um, some of them come, come with a, a built-in display, but if I'm trying to see something, man, I'd, I'd much rather have a, buy a separate tablet. Disconnected yeah. with aircraft. I'd rather have this one. Because oh, it'll one. the big one. This one is this one is about two and it's got collision avoidance sensors all the way around and uh, these disconnected you know, with aircraft. So those are about two. And so the other thing you know it's important is I like huh? Oh the the uh, tablet here is probably you know it's whatever you want to spend on for eBay on a tablet. Uh, it could be four hundred up to four hundred and as low as a hundred depending. So this is just a iPad. There's other ones. We have uh, Apple, Samsung products, but uh, 
Yeah, it's whatever. It's like a truck or anything else. It's however much you want to spend on it. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you can get bells and whistles, but you know, I'd much rather, if I'm going to test stuff out, I'd much rather crash this one than some other ones I have. Mm -hmm. That one, so this one's going to make me sad, but not going to make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> so. Next uh, research effort. So the will, next. Will ne they, um, chase off black vultures? So we. <laughs> We've actually tried that. We've tried that on numerous occasions. And actually, whenever we're out here circling that cows, they come out there and try to circle with us. They think, because the black vulture, you know, it follows the red one to the, to the food. Oh. Let me go ahead and bring us back here. I can bring it back while she's All right, talking. Yeah. Um, so the, we tried, you know, we tried, they come out there and circle while we're circling. And then we tried chasing them off with it, but they're much more dynamic in three dimensional space than we are. So we can try to do, and they're, 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 they can outmaneuver us any day of the week. So it's, we thought it would work, but it, was, it didn't. I think our, our next goal with this is try to use those to, to move cattle to Battery some degree. Because uh, be at 15 feet above ground level, we can actually induce movement in the cattle. So what he was saying was we can actually get the cattle to move to some degree. So we get two drones out there side by side, sitting there humming at 15 feet above ground level, they'll actually go ahead and we'll push the animals. So we've actually been able to push them up and down the fence line here Obstacle on several detected. occasions. Obstacle detected. <laughs> Good job. So for us, it's, it's our next next goal is to actually use these to autonomously herd animals. And then the other aspect is we're actually flying. Um, it's actually been somewhat fairly accurate. We fly around them at different altitudes. So we'll fly around them at uh, in radius. It's about 30 feet, uh, 40 feet, and 50 feet above ground level, a different radius as well. And we're able to actually create, you know, we can do it with the statue, but we can create 3D images from them. Let's create a 3D uh, volumetric representation of the calf and cows. So that's been kind of a neat aspect as well. But. Do you measure any other physiological, I got really late, you may have discussed this, any other physiological attributes of the cattle besides heart rate? Uh, we, you know, we thought about we thought about measuring some blood parameters, but by the time we get everything on them, so it takes about, it's a 10 minute process to put everything on them. Yeah. And they make fun of us because we have a cost effective solution here was our, our gutter pipe was our, our way we put every, our, all our sensors on the cow. And so <laughs> at some point, you know, we have to make everything practical. We have to, you know, cause we're gonna put on 16 to 32 animals. Yeah. So we can't spend a whole lot of money on it. So we got these off of eBay and said, well, we can get these gutter pipe, put some lot of foam in there. And so we put our, our GPS and battery pack, and then our uh, actually use a, a cell phone as well as so we're recording the sound that the, the cows are hearing, recording um, uh, the sound levels that the cows are hearing, and the and the GPS on two different two different methodologies. So with the phone and the GPS thing, a uh, puck, and so you know we thought about measuring cortisol, but we just couldn't measure it fast enough. By the time yeah. we run everybody through, and so probably what we would see is just them being excited from the workup and not necessarily the drone. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, that information. They have the um, cow manager. They have the cow manager tag, and so some of that information we have from Kirk, but they have all the raw data. We get the what's after the fact. Uh, but we haven't actually necessarily correlated that to you know, the, how they're behaving, but we do look at overall temperature. So we looked at over, over that four-week four period, we're looking at temperature as well, uh, ambient temperature, just to make sure that's not influencing the animal, that we can say it's, it is the drone not just the temperature yeah. over that four week period. Have you but. ever crashed one and so how much was it? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, I've crashed, which one? This, this one there, oh, that's probably at least three times. I've sent it back to DJI twice. Cause the first, you know, a couple of those times, you know, accidents will happen. And so that's something to keep in mind is just have a plan of action. You know, when, when accidents happen, just be ready to, you know, effectively make sure nobody's hurt, no bodily harm. Make sure it's below $500, because above $500 it's reportable uh, to the FAA. And uh, you know, most of the time, it's, it's a power. What gets me is power lines or tree limbs. So power lines, a little more difficult to see. You might forget it's there. It'll just take straight off and forget. I'll take off without looking up first. Yeah. And that, that's what gets you. Because <laughs> you think you're somewhere that's okay. You're out on the farm. <laughs> you think everything's gonna be okay, but sometimes you just forget about that power line above you. So mm -hmm. power lines and tree limbs. Are probably 90% of what like my problem. So this this one's 
a problem, so we've had that one. That's most of the crashes. This one has uh, collision avoidance on all four sides, and so it's less likely, but not impossible. I haven't crashed it yet. Yeah. Haven't crashed it yet. <laughs> so knock on wood, you know, knock on wood. And so accidents will happen. So you just have to be ready to, and that's why I like, you know, there's, um, you know, DJI is kind of like the John Deere of, you know, they just are ubiquitous. Uh, and so they're just everywhere. So it's kind of like, at least I know I can get parts and service uh, on relatively uh, fast basis if I need it, if something goes wrong. So I just sent it off to them and said, fix it. Because a lot of times we think we can fix it ourselves, but by the time you get the parts and do this and that, I'm like, well, well, just send it off to them. They have all everything they need as opposed to us waiting on to get the parts. So but, any other questions y'all have or? So it's uh, the two big ones. Yeah, you can control the camera. So there's a number of different buttons you can use to control the camera. Um, which one are we? It's off, so you oh, gotta it's use, off, this so I'll use this one. Yeah. So we can. So you can either control it, you know, with the remote controller here, or actually you can use the screen to control it. So it depends on what you're looking at. It'll actually, it's gimbaled, so it'll try to maintain the downward or same angle as much as possible. Yeah. And so it um, does relatively well with the GPS, and so you can record video, like, and sometimes you can actually, you know, actually adjust the camera just by using the screen itself, just holding down and pulling up or down. So I, I like, you know, sometimes it's worth spending extra money on the drones because it can, if the better it thinks, the less you have to think. So if you get a, a, a simple, cheap drone, it's, sometimes it's not going to be as good just because this one, you know, has a return to home button. And you don't realize how much that's needed until you get that sun gets about 12 o'clock. You got those white clouds up there at 400 feet above ground level. This thing becomes really hard to see. Yeah. Really hard to see. It's got those lights on there. You're supposed to help you see, but it's not. Uh, doesn't it doesn't match the sunshine. Yeah. So when it gets right up in the sky there, it's hard to see. So having a return to home is really, really, really important um, for a lot of what we what we try to do. But, <laughs> so that's that's what we're trying to figure out so we got to it is still hard to find the calves they yeah. can they can get uh you know in that grass there's not much out here but you yeah. know probably in that all those pigweed over there they could probably hide in that pretty well but uh you know for that we're almost looking to get a thermal camera because yeah. i want to be able to identify them clearly and distinctly so that's my next goal is to also we proposed that this summer but ran out of time was just trying to find smaller animals using thermal camera. Because visually, you know, we had, they had a calf get out, what was it, two years ago and got into the alfalfa field and lied down. We spent forever trying to, we, we flew over that field, flew over, so now it's like, we gotta get some type of thermal camera on there. Because once they get in there, they can hide pretty daggone well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's our next goal. It's like not only looking for them, but also finding calves. Yeah. So we got to a point, there's some apps that say they can count, but we still have to see, to count the cows. Uh, we'll start to see if those actually work yet or not. Uh, I haven't been able to make them work on at least my phones. Uh, but there are apps out, out that are available that can help you potentially, and I think they're in development, to count and identify animals on the farm. So it's the technology's getting there. How close would they have to get to uh, it, it depends if it's uh, ultra high frequency, like it, most electronic IDs, like if you're low frequency RFID, um, you know, they, they need to be within about five or six feet and you can do a flyby potentially. Or if it's a, a ultra high frequency, that's one of our other goals, just look at ultra high frequency and just see, can we identify animals using that? There are some like they have here, like they have Bluetooth tags. We can pick those up quite easily. Um, and Active tags, the Tennessee did a study with active tags and cattle. They were able to, you know, these are actively powered tags, they have a battery in them. So they're able to detect and, and find animals as well. So that, that was the University of Tennessee. So I think that's probably, uh, I want to say three or four years ago, they were looking at that. So. And then, yeah, you know, it's pretty much just whatever you can find and figure out and find a way to use them for on the farm. We have a couple extension pubs. I think it's AEN 160 or AEN 159 on like the cost of drones, using fence line monitoring. 
and other aspects. So got a lot of, a lot of different pubs out there. Uh, just be worth it to check them out, um, the extension pubs, and we'll try to get some videos online of just showing how you set up uh, your flight paths or how you go about doing your flight paths. So and some, of the, some of that's online for just setting up your waypoints for DJI Go, uh, Ground Station Pro, and uh, Drone Harmony. So a couple, couple different apps, all kinds of different apps. I think Lecce might let you do it as well.